So that may risk you, that may you risk what? Your prayer being valid. If you make a mistake in Tawheed, that may risk you what? Departing Islam. Are you, so due to lack of knowledge or due to ignorance, is someone excused? If that was the case, then, not, then ignorance would be better than knowledge. Why would people learn? Just remain ignorant and you're always going to be excused. Fine. It's a nice right. No. Allah says, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ It's not equal those who know and those who, not, who do not know. Therefore, you are supposed to know. This is your job on life in the dunya. Job in the dunya to spend time so you can, this couple of hours so you can learn your tawheed. You know who you worship. So you don't make mistakes. As sahab al-jaleel Qudayb ibn al-Yaman, if you may have read it, sahih he used to say, they used to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking him about good things to do. And I used to wait and ask him about evil things. And then they said, why? He said, so I can avoid them. So I can avoid them. So it is your job that number one, you learn your tawheed so you don't make any mistakes in it. If you make mistakes due to, to ignorance, you're accountable. Insanity is different than ignorance. If one is insane, or one is uh, asleep, he's not accountable. <coughs> but ignorance is not insanity, though it is in a metaphorical sense, but it is not really. <coughs> and then, also, it is not asleep. No. Is it true that if somebody prays the janazah of a Shia, his nikah becomes invalid? No, it is not true. We have enough janazas among the Sunnah and the Jama'ah. Get busy doing these things, get busy doing that. But if you praise the janazah, if someone says, Allah have mercy on him or something like that, that should not invalidate his nikah. Unless he believes, unless this man was declaring, or was declaring all the Muslims so far and, he's kafir, and he's, he became kafir. If he is kafir, and you say, uh, Allah has mercy on him, that won't. Islam. In other words, Allah does not have mercy on the kuffar. No. Allah has, has, has mercy on the kuffar only in the dunya, not in the akhirah. No. Shaykh, can I expand on that question? No. Is it permissible to wear the taweez, i.e. ayahs of the Qur'an, on the body for protection? And our Qur'an, all of the Qur'an is barakah. All of the Qur'an is protection. So is it permissible to have ayahs of the Qur'an on you carrying all the time? Sure. Can you carry the Qur'an with you all the time? Sure. But make sure when you carry the Qur'an or the name of Allah, especially for the ladies, for the sisters, do not go into the bathroom with it. Do not have it when you're having your monthly period. And for, this, for the brothers, do not go in it in something somewhere that's not respectable because you have the name of Allah on you. So be careful with that. How do you explain to Buddhists and Hindus who believe in God as a supreme being that reincarnation is not possible? Because we don't believe in the same God, yes. They believe in a God that has all kinds of forms. We believe in a God that is attributed with the attributes of Godhood and Lordship, which are attributes of perfection, that are not similar to the creation, that have no beginning, that, have no, that are not subject to change. They don't believe in that. Yeah. And therefore, uh, they believe that God could be reincarnated in anything. Cows, camels, pigs, elephants, whatever it is, rats even. So that negates that. Why? Because that's likening a lot to the creation. Yeah. I am thinking of, inshallah, doing medicine at university and a lot of unis do human dissections. What does Islam say about this? Islam has the utmost respect for the body of a human being. Yes. Only in cases of absolute necessity that may be become then permissible and Allah knows best. But the human body is extremely, the Muslim human body of course is extremely honorable that one cannot, that one must bury it immediately. No. And not benefit from it. Allah. Are we allowed to read or listen to the English translation of the Holy Quran? You are allowed to read it and listen to it as long as you don't think this is the Qur'an. The English translation is not the Qur'an. The Qur'an is what Allah said, not what Yusuf Ali said. Or what Bakhtar said, or what uh, 
Muslim translated or whoever these people who translated the Quran with all due respect can you get the English? That's not what Allah said. Allah said what it is in the Quran that you that you have in the Arabic language. That is what the book of Allah. So otherwise as to to learn and so you may. Though remember that these people mostly are linguists, not scholars of tafsir. No. And these translations are really interpretations, they're not translations. They interpret the Quran based on their understanding of what it should how it should be interpreted. SubhanAllah, this is the science of tafsir, so they assume that responsibility and they do it anyhow. No. Are we allowed to hire cars on Eid day? As long as you do your fard, namaz, etc. Hire cars what? It's a tradition here that young lads they hire cars on Eid and then they drive around and that's their celebration. Hire two cars next time, inshallah. As long as you don't do with these things, fasad. You know, if you hire a car on Eid so you can go and visit your family and visit your brother or go to another masjid to do ihya or to do qiyam or so, that's beautiful. If you hire a car to do things that are wrong with it, then you are accountable. for ostentation, haram. Anything for ostentation is haram. Atheists say that if there was a God, why does he let humans die in a cruel way, like a child dying from cancer? The person who asked this question has not been, must have not been with us or must have been absent-minded if he was or she was. Because they are trying to judge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on their thought process, their reason and their wisdom. And again, Allah is not similar to the creation. Allah is not like the creation. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the judge, not you. It's not who you, you who determine what is reasonable or what is wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determines, or knows, I'm sorry, what wise is. No. It says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blow the spirit into Adam alayhi salam. Is this correct? Again, you're, you're saying it's, it says that the ayah which means Allah willed for the creation of Isa alayhi salam bi'amrina ruhina means bi'amrina with our order, with our command, this is what it means not blow spirit and all these things and pieces and parts so if you say he, uh, Isa is part of the spirit, so that's what the Nasara say that Isa is part of Allah no Isa was created which means with, why, by our order, by our command, as the Mufassirin said. No. Is the Prophet physically present when questioned in the grave? And Nabi Al-A'lam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith says, he said, Hayati khayran lakum, my life is good for you, wa mamati khayran lakum, and when I pass away, or when we say death, we mean the passing away. My death is good for you. Uh, your a'mal are exposed to me. They're shown to me all the time. So your a'mal are shown to the Prophet So uh, the Nabi said in the hadith, if I see something good, I thank Allah. And if I see something other than that, I make istighfar for you. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah. When the Quran mentions the Ruhul Qudus, when relating the story of Sayyidina Isa, is this an ayah mutashabihat? If so, how should we understand it? Some scholars say Ruh Qudus means Jibreel. Some scholars say no, Ruh Qudus is another, is another angel. So Allah knows best. No. Allah will question us on the day of judgment. Will we see or will Allah be there in a place? How can you say Allah in a place? Allah is the creator of the place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists with no place now and all the time. Allah does not dwell in a place. Because if he dwells in a place, that means the place limits him. Or the, he is part of him in the place. That means he's a part, he's a mass, he's a form, he's a shape. Allah is the creator of mass, parts, forms, shapes, etc. All these things are attributes of the creation. They are not attributes of the Creator, Jalla'u'ala. 
If someone asks, why do you believe in life after death? What is the best way to answer this? Because Allah told us so. The creator who created our life told us there is life after death. Very simple. I am sure 100% there is a wisdom when Allah allows natural disasters like tsunami to occur. Being a weak human, I'd like to know the wisdom.